I met him at our pastor's conference that we've been attending for the last three years. And we said we will go continue to stay in touch. And I told my sister three years ago, I said that he's coming to our church one day. He's here to do a conference on this week, and he called and let me know that he was on the way. He was going to be here. I said, please come by and bless us, please. He said, let me check in my calendar. He, he, he didn't hesitate. He called me right back and told me he would do it. Amen. I thank God for his humility. And whenever I needed somebody to talk to, he will always pick up the phone. I know sometimes you got tired of me crying sometimes. <laughs> but sometimes you need somebody that's going to be in your corner when you're at the least. When you're at the time where you're about to break. You got to have somebody. Y'all ain't saying it in the open here. He didn't have to answer the phone yet still because he's busy. He had a ministry of over a thousand members. They're in the process of purchasing a, a new facility. And so we want to be a blessing to him. Amen. Amen. I thank God for him and his wife. He has one son. One son. And if I tell you his son know how to shout. <laughs> his son know how to shout. Amen. He has a testimony about his son. I'm about to be the Lord lead him. I want him to share that about his testimony. And when I tell you that this young man is a powerful prayer warrior. When you need somebody to pray, he's a powerful suggest to you is that if you would just open your heart up to receive, um, God will move in a mighty way. I, I've been in Houston, Texas the last few days. I've been preaching since I was 14 years old. I'm 35 years old. i got three children, London, Eliza, and Alea. Uh, I operate heavy in miracles, okay? So miracles break out. Miracles break out. So he was talking about my son. Uh, about three years ago, my son, um, had about a, maybe about a 4% chance of living. And um, they told us to literally give up on him. There wasn't nothing else that they could do for him. That he would have to have a higher power. But I wasn't operating in miracles then. Uh, I come out of a Pentecostal church. Uh, Y'all know anything about that, you know. <laughs> Collies. <laughs> dresses, you know. We don't know what dresses are. Uh, uh, but I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe that the Holy Ghost is for just a Pentecostal church, just for a Baptist church. I believe the Holy Ghost will be poured out on any person that will receive it. Amen. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm a little radical, or, 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 
box, okay? So you just got to flow with me, okay? And as I flow with God, I was just in Houston, Texas the last few days, and man, but God, ah, he just moved in such a mighty way. Last time we was down there, uh, I was at this church called A Pool of Life, and the Lord had me to minister to a woman in the congregation. And I seen somebody that was very close to her in shackles. And I kept asking her, well, why do I see somebody in shackles where her husband was in prison on a double murder charge? And they gave him double life. Did you hear what I said? And I said, Lord, don't make me say that. I said, because I don't want nobody to think that I'm false. He said, if you say what I tell you to say, they all know you heard me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy Ghost told me to tell that woman that her husband was going to come up out of prison. Yeah, you know she showed out. She started rolling in the flow and doing all of that. <laughs> but I went there to minister this week. I was there this morning. Got on a plane about five to get here. And I, I, I'm up preaching and this big old huge dude walk into church. Wow. While I'm preaching, he runs up. And I'm like, oh, who is this? <laughs> He runs up and he grabs me so tight and he said, I love you, man, I love you, I love you, crying tears. And I'm like, what's going on? And some of the brothers from the church, the massive church that I was at, this morning, they, they ran up and they started grabbing, hey man, hold on, stop, you know. And, and the woman came in and said, that's my husband. My God. Oh, my God. And so, uh, but before we can go into the word, I gotta call y'all faith up. Because I can tell some of y'all faith a little low. So sometimes when things don't happen the way you're used to seeing things happen, you don't think it's God. Because I could discern when I came in this building that while that young man was up here rapping, some of y'all was saying that's too much. But when you ready for him to be rapping in here and to be rapping in here? Maybe he might be the one that will deliver your great child. Maybe, maybe it might not be for you, but it's for somebody else. But John 10, 16 said, I have a other sheep which are not of this fold, and my also must bring. They shall have a shepherd, and they shall hear my voice. Right, right. Which means the church ain't going to just look like me. It ain't going to just look like you. We gotta all be able to come together collectively and hear God through different people. Somebody say amen. amen. We are in a progressive time. Yeah. If this church is gonna go where God wanted to go, that means that we have to open ourselves up to the will of God. It ain't a Baptist God, it ain't a Pentecostal God, it ain't a church of God in Christ God, son. It's only one God. And every knee go bow, and every tongue go confess that Jesus Christ is God. Lord, can we celebrate God in this room? All right, so I'm going to this word. I promise you I'm to try to be long because um, I know uh, spring break is over uh, for y'all down here and uh, you want to get home. Amen? Yeah, uh, so let's go to Romans chapter number 8. And when the Lord gave me this to minister to you guys, I really got excited about it. And I'm a word preacher. I believe that if God speaks to us, he speaks to us through his word. Amen. 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 So if you're not a word lover, it's going to be a little hard for you. Amen. Amen. All right. Romans chapter number 8, verse number 18. We'll read one verse for the sake of time. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. We'll read one more time. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I want you to literally walk around, touch about two or three people and say, it's going to happen for the glory. It's going to happen for the glory. Sisters, 
I believe uh, that it is God's concern for the believer for us to understand that we are going through for the glory. I think a lot of times we spend a lot of time misdiscerning what it is that we are going through. We miss what God has for us because we are looking at the current situation as if it means it's over for us, but it's all that God is trying to get some glory out of our life. I know that might seem challenging, but I can give you a lot of Bible to show us that God took people through things because he was trying to get some glory out of it. Like if we go to Genesis, we'll see in Genesis where uh, God told Abraham, I want you to offer up your only son. He wanted to, he wanted to see would he do some things, come on here, or suffer in the face of adversity. The Bible says that he tells him, go up to the mountain, I'm going to show you where to go. And when you get up there, I want you to offer up your only son. The Bible says that he gets up there and his son says, Father, Father, where is the sacrifice? The Bible says that he said, the Lord will provide. I believe we're living in a day and time where the believer don't even believe that God will provide. Some of us are sitting in here right now. We believe more in ourselves than we believe in trusting in God. Isn't it funny that most of us, we are leaning on God for God to make a way in our wilderness. We're asking God to bring us out of our deserts, but we don't want to suffer anything. We, we want God to raise us up, but we don't want to have to go through anything for God to get the glory. Look at some of y'all that already checked out. Because some of you, you want miracles, but you don't want the pain that comes along. Oh, God. Somebody say, give me some more Bible. Could you give me some more Bible? The Bible says, come on here in John. The Bible says that there was a young man who was born blind. You remember that mother? The Bible said he was born blind. The Bible says that Jesus, come on here, comes up to him. Come on here, spits in the ground. Come on here, moves the clay around and put it over the young man's eyes. And, and they said, well, what did his mother do? What did his father do? He said, no, this ain't nothing to anybody did. I just want to get some glory out of his life. Y'all yeah, been talking about it. Ah, so I'm going through because God is trying to get some glory out of my life. And what happens with James is most of us say we want God to take us higher, but we don't understand the process of going higher. Because in order for God to take you higher, He first got to bring you lower. Does somebody say you the same God of yesterday, today, and forever? Check to see, are you sitting outside of praise? Say, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Say, if y'all only knew the hell that I've been through, you would understand why I praise God the way I praise God. If you only understood the warfare that I go through in my mind, you would understand there's a reason I praise God the way I praise God. What's your neighbor? Sit down and say, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Say, it's good that you was a flipper because you learned his statues. You learned his ways. Look at you up in this room. Understand, beloved, that it is only the will of God that you would suffer for a season. Because after you suffer for a season, you're going to reign after life. I need you to look at your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor. I hear the word 
You must not know who I am. Yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah, 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 You must not know about me. You must not know about me. That's what I'm going to do about tomorrow. You don't see it, do you? Yeah, I know. This is what he says. He says, I come in the name of I've already killed the bell. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've already killed the lion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not coming in my name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I'm coming in the name of the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Come on. Uh, hey, y'all, y'all, y'all are dangerous. Y'all are dangerous. You should see me meet this dog. Y'all are dangerous. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so David was a praise. Come on here. See, this is what happens when you have a Jesus. lifestyle of a worship. Most people that's not a worshiper, yeah, yeah. Yeah. before the word come forth, uh -huh. they good as long as somebody yeah. sing it. Yeah. But when the word come forth, they tap out. Because yeah. they don't have the lifestyle of a worship. Because they understand. You know, you, you some so wonderful and I enjoyed your testimony. But singing don't get nobody nowhere. supernaturally in your finances. Can you praise God for every broke day you had but you still serve the Lord? Come on. 
Because what people will do is they will only hold you Come on. to what you were. Every time 
I go to the church. They always tell the people to give. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, here you go. All right, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come if, 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 if you don't practice the lifestyle of a gift, yeah, right. and when you hear, watch this, if you hear something about some money in church and your spirit shut down, you ain't none of God. Somebody said, said, you need some Bible for that. Mm. You want it? I get to it. Bible said, he gave me five talents. Come on. Yeah. Right. He came back to him, he had ten talents. He said, that good and faithful servant, because you've been faithful over a few, I'm going to make you rule over me. He finds one with two talents. He said, what you do with it? I got four now. He said, that good and faithful servant, because you've been faithful over a few, I'm going to make you rule over me. He went to the one with the one talent. There was the one with the Yes, sir. She hears the Lord's money from you. Come on, sir. You know what he's saying? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. He's saying, you slobber and wicked, sir. Yeah. Be cast in the other darkness where there's gas in the teeth. Don't you know some folks don't go to hell? Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. Because they came to church and they became takers and not givers. Whoa! Come on. 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 Some of y'all are praying to God for money miracles. Yeah, God didn't give you no money miracles if you can't trust you with the money you got right now. Okay, I'm going to see if you will pray this God right here. You will be the richest person with your last night. Come on! You know what? You can shout because you ain't a giver. Just to pray. Yeah. You're going to pray a little. I don't see y'all can pray. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. 
Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. No, I'm talking about the real. Yeah. 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 Yes. Hey, Rick. Yes, sir. I called a prayer meeting in our church. I called an emergency one. I said, I need everybody to meet me at the church at 7 o'clock. I need as many of them as over 400 people. They made me in prayer. Jesus. Amen. And we had to call him on the name of the Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Waymaker, burning barrier, mind regulator. We need you to open up a door and we need you to do it right now. Holy Ghost said, get up off your face and go back over there to the church. I walk over to my wife, she on her knees. I said, hey, God told me to go back over to the church. She said, all right, I'll hold it down until you get back. I walk over there and, and they, they're in the building. They're having their board meeting. And I knock on the door. And she said, oh, what you doing here? We're having a board meeting. I said, well, the Lord told me to come over here. I, I came up in a board meeting. They said, well, this is uh, uh, this is Pastor Lee Andre Bumpers. Y'all know him. He, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we heard of your ministry. It's called State Administration, right? I said, yes, sir. I said, I want to buy the building. I said, she said, yeah. he said, yeah, the, 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 the sister told us that you wanted to buy the building. He said, our membership has declined. Come on here. He said, and the only thing we're asking for the building is $175,000. I said, really? That's all? For all of this building, the building behind it, you just want $175,000? He said, yeah, that's all we want. I went, I said, I went, I said, all right, I'm going to go to my bank tomorrow and then I'll give y'all a call. I go to my bank the next day. You better hear faith now. I go to my bank the next day. And I said, y'all, come on here. I tell my wife, I put the seed in the ground. Now I need my faith to come into agreement with what I believe in God for. Can he trust us? Yes. 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 Yes.
with, yes, the look, with, with the look, with the future. Yes, sir. Listen to this. My church is not comprised of all people. 90% of our church is between the ages of 40 and 19. Wow. I just now started to get older people. In this city, a bishop told me that you will not be able to do anything in this city unless you come through me. My God. I had people cut chickens up and leave them in my front door. I had people come on here. I done had witches. You better hear me now. I done had witches come and stand at the front of the door, church on the door. And she said, everybody in this building going to die. I'm from Africa. And if you're a real man of God, come on here. We're going to see who got more power. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Ye
you for taking this on my life. It's about to be on your life. The James is right there with me. He traveled up the country with me extensively. We were in Jackson, Mississippi, and the Lord said, every car you got is paid for. How can you let the man that travel with you carry your bags at times? Yeah. And have a call for you. Amen. Holy Ghost said, call, and we're going to pay your call. Amen. He tried to be on the other. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> there was we called and we paid that call. My God. Cool. My God. My brother in law traveled the country with me. He's been in uh, 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 Kuwait. Yes, sir. For the last year and a half. He just made it to El Paso at 2 o'clock today. Yes, sir. <laughs> Holy Ghost said, he traveled with you, but why is he driving a Kia Sorrento? Amen. Amen. Take him to the dealership and get him whatever you want. Amen. Yeah. Uh, he Amen. Even picked out a Mercedes Benz. Amen. 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 I don't think you understand. <laughs> I think it's going on. But I'm saying, if God can trust you, yes, he will channel it through. Yes, but if he can't trust you, he will channel my name. Yes, yes. How can he play? And his hand still got dead. Wow. How can I be preaching about God raising credit scores and his credit bag? Can't nobody run with me with bad credit. Because if they got bad credit, they got bad character. Oh, my God. Huh? I didn't say a little loud. Okay, what's your last name? Oh, you, you, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> Look at his eye. I want you to say your name again. Believe. No, bro, come on now. You gotta be more power. Let's say your name. Believe. Uh uh uh. You loud in there. You're using those streets, you loud in there. Let's say your name. Believe. That's what the Lord doing right there. <laughs> He calling you, but you're not responding. Believe! Believe! There's songs that's attached to your hands. Oh. And if you don't answer the call, the innocent blood of people will be lost. You don't say yes. I hear the Lord say, forgiveness is about to hit y'all house. It's an unresolved issue that's causing some unforgiveness to be in the house. And the Lord said it's about to break now in the name of Jesus. On the top of three, I need everybody in here. Open up your mouth and scream out of your belly. One, two, three, go! Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> 
So it's like you, you struggle with, is this God, is it not God, is it God, is it God? Because you come from a, from a, a system. As if God can only speak to one person. Well, well. And God's bringing you out systems of control. Oh my God. When I lay hands on you, the prophet is about to wake up and thank you. Hallelujah! So give me that. In the last days, I'm going to put out my spirit on my people. My sons and daughters are going to prophesy. You are getting ready to feel a new reality in your life. And as you prophesy, it's going to come up. When I lay hands on you, when I lay hands on you, I hear the Lord say, Yeah. <laughs> 